Good morning, gang. I think we're up. We have a medium floater today. No stream stream. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> I had to get back to work here. It was fun on Monday. I had, I had a really, 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 I don't know, what's the word? I forget what you call it. Just a day, sort of a zoned out day. I did some nominal bits and pieces of desk work, but basically just wasted the day. Wasted in quotation marks. I had good fun. It was really hot out there, but once the stream was shut down, I got in the water a couple of times. Very nice, peaceful day. And then the next day, you know, here in Tokyo, I was back for the next day. I zoned out most of the day. I took two days of just, I don't know, I think the last couple of weeks has been a bit, I don't know, it was a bit too much. The, the printing and everything else going on top of that. So I'm back to normal now. I needed that couple of days off for sure. Absolutely, I needed that couple of days. Someone's saying you like that view towards the road you showed us. I'm not sure what you mean, I'm sorry. You mean when we were in the middle of the stream stream, I pointed for a few seconds, I pointed the camera up. Yeah, I wanted to show you the river and the stream and the houses across there and the town. We can see the whole town from there, but we couldn't see anything because just it hasn't been cleaned, it hasn't been trimmed. I was thinking about that a bit after we shut the stream off on Monday. I was thinking I should get the trimmers out there and get going a little bit, but I just didn't have the energy. It's not the day for that kind of stuff. You know? Anyway, we're back in the ranch, back at the ranch here, and we have, uh, we have printmaking work today. Not perhaps what you might expect, but we do have, uh, we do have printmaking work today. We've also got notes. I've got a bunch of notes. Oh, it's on my desk upstairs. Notes about stuff I'm supposed to uh, chat and talk and remind you about. One is this. There's a gentleman here in Tokyo at the moment from China. From... I, the name of the province up towards the northeast. Jilin. Got it. He's from Jilin province. He's a university professor over there. He's here. He's having a little exhibition here in Tokyo. So he's got an exhibition in Kamakura this week. If you're living in Tokyo, look up the gallery Vivant. Don't ask why, just whatever. He's in the gallery Vivant. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's here, Wan Yan, but I don't know. He's a nice guy. He came the other day to, to see us. He wants to spend some time here printing. It's kind of busy right now. I don't know. But anyway, this is the kind of work he's doing. So if you're interested in this, I don't know, he's had, had an exhibition is here in Tokyo, in, in Kamakura this week. So. It, you know, when we get a printmaker like this visiting Tokyo, I chatted with him outside. He came in the shop. He's been watching YouTube videos and stuff. I was thinking, you know, gee, do I invite him to sit on the chair? But he can't speak English at all. Not, not at all. I know, without, just makes no sense to have somebody here that we can't, uh, can't communicate with. So. Uh, it might have been fun because he showed me some videos of his workshop and they are making big, big, and I mean big tatami sized prints with a bunch of workers all around the edge doing this. It's really interesting printmaking going on there, but uh, there's no way to, uh, to communicate with the guy. So He spent some time in Japan, so he speaks a little bit of Japanese, yes, but doesn't help us for a, for a stream here. This is my, so many things, it looks like an old block. This is my, uh, uh, what do you call it? There's no name for it. It's not a TV block. I don't know. When I have to do things like picking out chili, I need a base piece of wood. So, so we put this here. So it's, not, it's not top secret at all. Oh, this is nothing to do with the stream. Nothing to do with the stream. I brought it back from Ome. It was my real reason for going to Ome. We'll talk about this next week. It's, it's, for the moment, it's top secret. The real reason I went to Ome was something else. I asked them to make some work for me so we could do a stream and chat, 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 chat. But I went there with a most devious reason in mind. Talk about it soon. Another batch of prints from one of our printers here.
Can we see this? Whatever's on my desk, I'm supposed to be checking them today. It's a bit dark. They've been a bit dark on the key block. The young... This is what I want. I want a delicate gray on the key blocks. And people here always, always, always try and put too much black on it. Anyway, 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 put that aside. Okay, today's work, we're going back in time. There's a bunch of projects that have been cooking. There are some large print projects that have been cooking for a while now. The Centre for Chrysanthemums project, I am expecting it to arrive from Chiharu-san, the printer, this morning at about 9.30. That's coming. The ramen cats, you've seen it. Aimi-san is printing. She booked off yesterday again, and she probably won't finish before she goes to Hokkaido for the summer holidays. But that's cooking. What else large projects? The Yoshida print is cooking. Taran-san's block set is finished. It's been test printed. We're going to do another round of test printing to try and deepen it up. That'll happen when Aimi-san gets back from her summer holidays in Hokkaido. What else is happening? There's the Evening Bell in, this, in the Eight Cats series. That's waiting for me to go to Namabe-san's place and figure out how to do a couple more blocks on it. Those are four large important projects still cooking. There's one more important project cooking. Back to work on the surfer today. I had to postpone it for the subscription work. Okay, where are we on the surfer? Where are we on the surfer? We've had some test printing done. Our, our printer, Mr. K, Kawaii Atsushi, did some test prints. You've seen these. I showed them to you these. They came back from him. Is it months ago already? They're not intended to be finished prints. They were just intended to be block checking. Like the, the blue isn't as deep as it should be. The hair isn't as deep as it should be. They were just simply a block check. We haven't even started to think about how we're going to do the texture on the surfer, surfboard later. It was block check. And the blocks don't check out. The blocks don't check. He did his job really, really well. Did test one and test two. But it turns out that Dave, while you're doing the carving, they're not good enough. The blocks aren't good enough. And we're going to need some quite extensive re-carving. We're not going to have to throw them out. I can work with them as they are. But they're going to need some recutting. And here's what I did. I'll show you what we're going to do now. I'll show you how I slipped up. I'll show you what we have to do. Okay, this is a color photocopy of the print. I didn't miss some blues. It's worse than that. <laughs> Let's zoom in here. Let's just find some place randomly, whatever. Here, this will do just fine. Let's find a place above her head here, not that part. Here we are. Let's find this place. Up at the top. Okay, this is a color photocopy, and this is Mr. K's first test print. Again, don't worry about the blues not matching, we don't care. This is a uh, test to see how the blocks look. Let me get my, my poker here. And maybe some of you have already noticed what's going on. It's the width of the white lines between the blue. And what I had done was I had used this color copy, took it in Photoshop, and traced everything. I didn't trace the white, I traced the blue. And I tra you saw me do it, we did a bunch of this uh, online. So I traced the blue to try and make a replica of this that went on to the wood to get pasted. And I guess, I don't know, I thought I did it accurately. I thought I traced up to these white lines, leaving the gap that I felt was the right width, pasted it down on the board, and then carved out the white lines to what I felt was the proper width. But look at this. 
my white lines. Let's try and match them up here. Let's find something that matches. Whatever. Where am I? Here and here. You can see it here and here. Here and here. In my desire to get the lines smooth and nicely curved and looking tasteful, which I kind of think I did, I somehow seem to have got them all too narrow. And it's pretty much right across the entire surface of the print in front of her face here and here. It is part of Dave's, it's the same thing, it's part of Dave's overly control freak character. Me and Chonsan, the other carver working for us, we share this. And it's a real defect. We are trying to control it too carefully. We are trying to say, I can do this finer. I can do this more delicately. I can do this more carefully. And sometimes that's not what you need. Now, if you didn't have this, if we only saw this, that's fine, the carving. Wow, look at this cool, neat, delicate carving. But it's not what we need in this print. And the printers would go nuts trying to get these delicate lines. Remember, there's two or three blocks matched up here to show. There's the underneath block. Then there's the darker blue block. So this one has one block underneath both, then another block on top. And over on the other side, we've got three, four blocks built up. The printers would go nuts. So Dave here has to go, I'm not going to say go back to square one, but it's much more difficult to fix a line than it is to carve a line all over again. But here we are with the block sets. And what I'm going to try and do is this. I am going to sit here this morning with my blue base block. The block for the base. The one that covers all blue areas on the print. And I'm going to sit here with the master copy next to me. And I'm going to try. And I may fail here. I am going to try to open these up and still have a good clean, attractive curve. And that's really going to be difficult. It's much easier just to carve properly. What's someone talking about? The lines are too thin, but in the white area above... No, it's the same thing, John. If we look, if we look up into this area, you can see the color copy. Look at the blue here. Look at the thickness of the blue and look at the blue here. So the blue is expanded. All of my blue is expanded. Any given blue area on the original has become fatter in my version. So these also would need a bit of trimming up top here. Look at this. There's a certain thickness. It's fatter. Here's a thickness. It's fatter. My blue has expanded. It's got to be with the way I traced it and then printed out the tracing and where I put my knife on the edge of the line. I just had the wrong concept of where to cut. The tracing might have been fine, but when it came time to putting the line, the knife on the line, you can put the knife on the line or a little bit this way, a little bit this way. And I had the knife cutting in a way that all the blue is expanded too much. And I'm really not sure if I'm going to be able to correct this. I'm going to start with some sort of easy areas, shorter curves to try and get a feel for this, to try and get a feel for how much I need to slice off and whether I can do this or not, then I'm going to work outwards bit by bit by bit towards some larger curves. But the thing is, I have to do this twice because this is the base block and then on top of this come other blue blocks. So cut the base block again, make new transfer sheets, paste those transfer sheets on top of the other blue blocks I've already carved and try and slice them expanding to the same level. No idea. So if you're waiting for the surfer girl for a, for a summer gift present for somebody, <laughs> it's not going to happen.
So how are we going to do this so that you can see what's going on? Someone says you prefer the wrong version. As I said, if nobody knew what it was, this, we could make a very, very acceptable print out of this. Of course, we could make a dynamite print out of this. But it would be far extra work for the printers. We would reject a bunch of copies because they would be tamari blur in the lines. And it's not right. It's, it's not the print. It's not the vision that Okada-san did. And, you know, we're working with his family to try and show them that, hey, we can do a really, really, really good job of making his prints. And if I didn't tell them, they wouldn't notice. But, you know, but, 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 but. So, Chicken Meister's got it. I really should have caught this issue when I did the transfers. I really, really should have caught it at that point. But it was just, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Because we had transfers, you know, even right here. In my file here, we've got transfers. These were the blue transfer sheets. So we're going to start. We're going to touch up the base blue first, and then we'll move on to the uh, to the other ones. Yeah, you can see it the way it's closing up. This one. Can you see the area right? Look at the area right in front of her face. There's the copy of the original, a nice white, good smooth one. Here's my blue transfer sheet, the block that's on my desk right now. It's slightly smaller. It's slightly pulled down. And then here on the print, it's smaller still. So it's a multiple of things. It's the blue. I guess I've done the same thing twice. When I made, when I carved the base blue block, the lines got a thinner. And then when I carved the other blocks on top, they became even thinner too. Some lines are okay, you know, look at this. Look at this one here, get my poker again. Just to take one here, whatever, here coming out of her head, this one. There's the original. There's my blue, which is actually okay. And here we are down here, and that looks like it's actually okay. So it's not gonna be every one of these. Where to start, Janae? Where to start? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, now how can we do this so that it makes sense for people watching and so that I can see and compare back and forth? It might be a bit difficult to get a setup here. Let's see. Anthony, get rid of the junk on the bench. What's the best approach here? It's always got to be one by one. Look at each line individually, you know, like just basically start in a corner somewhere. Maybe start with the, I'll need a guide of what I've done and what I haven't done. So just take a look at the line above her head, for example. 
Mine is a bit thin there. Identify what it is, this one. And come back off it. Okay. Whether or not this is going to be very interesting to watch, I don't know. But let's have a look. It's, this is my job now for the next few days here. Looking good. I showed you the test prints from Kawaii-san when they came in, you know, a couple of months ago. You know, and I think we opened them on stream, actually, I think. I can't remember exactly. We opened it there, and I could instantly see what's happened, but I'm not like, oh my god, what have I done? So I didn't talk about this at the time on stream. But, so it's opening a package saying, hmm, that looks nice, so let's look at this in more depth a bit later, blah, 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 blah. No, so look at the tr you're saying the transfer sheet has thinner lines than the test print. No, the transfer sheet, which is just one image of the, the, the first blue block, the white lines are actually not so bad. And I wouldn't have noticed this at that time. When I pulled the first image off this block, so this block actually is probably not so bad. And it's then when you move forward to the other blocks, the other blocks that things start to stack up. You take an area, for example, where, where there is only the base blue. There's an area where, here, for example. That's a deeper blue. That's printed twice. That, but this area, these two, are only printed from the base blue. And you can see there's the line as it's carved. And there's the line as it appears in a finished print. So they are getting a little bit thinner from Kawaii-san's printing. He is really bam, 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 printing, heavily pressured, whereas I just lightly touched it here. And that's also another factor here. You can see this is closed up more. It's the same, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's just find an area. People are already going to sleep. Sorry about that. Whatever.
There's the first few cuts. Someone says, because it's overlapping blocks, some of the unevenness will cancel out. No, it gets worse. And remember, we're adding color with each one of the overlapping blocks. So there's no way these lines are ever going to get wider. Remember, the, the, the white lines are the leftover space. So as each block is carved maybe a bit too much from the left, next one's a bit too much for the right, that gap gets narrower and narrower. And there could be more trouble coming. For example, I've taken these three lines right now and I've widened, widened them from this side. And perhaps, if you imagine then, the next blue block, the one that's darker, maybe it was overlapping a bit too much from the other side. Well, we'll find out later. What we're going to do, of course, is once this is clear and clean to the level I like it, we're going to print this onto a transfer sheet carefully and paste it onto those other blue blocks. And at that point, we will see whether those blocks can be preserved and, and adjusted or whether they will have to be tossed and restarted. There's no reason to have to restart this one. We can just make this one fit the image we want. And whether or not we can use the next blue blocks, that's going to be an open question. So this block we want to save. The other blue blocks may be beyond help. We don't know. But in either case, it would start at this point. So.
it's impossible to see on the screen to show they're widening they're trying to get a bit smoother <laughs> So I tried these corrections when the block was still wet. Yeah, good luck on that one, of course. So, you know. <laughs> My apologies if this is not going to be so interesting today. This is, you know, whatever. This is just another step in getting this print produced. I'm not happy that it's come to this. I should have been more careful. You'd think after all these years of experience, I would have, you know, been a bit more careful with this at the front because I've done this sort of stuff before. Overlapped colors, of course, you know. So I should have been more careful, no argument, you know. It, the easy excuse is so much going on these days, you know.
Yeah, some of them you can see at this point. I can see where there's a wide spot and a narrow gap here, you know. Will it be a chantelle? Yes, there's a chantelle. I'm not in any way going to finish this today. This is going to go on for days and days and days. Absolutely. So yes, I think I have it. What we'll do for chantelle today, there's two options here on the table. I brought down that book. We've been looking at that book, the 12 pictures in the, you know, the album of Mizuno Toshikata. Remember the egg going to the fish? We looked at the first half of that book the other day. So let's flip it over and look at the other half of that book today. So there is still, there, there is chantelle today. I mentioned earlier about the scent of chrysanthemums print, and I guess I can let you know what's going on. Uh, you saw, it's weeks ago now, you saw the prints that were made by Sugasam. She took over the block set and had a go at making some of them. She's tried a couple of times over the past few years, actually, and uh, they perhaps really didn't work out very well. But she had a go this last couple of months and uh, came up with some, some really, really nicely made prints. But, and this is no, this is no uh, telling tales on her, it was difficult, it was a struggle. There were quite a number of spoiled prints, and she was, you know, kind of beat up by the process at the end of it. So I had to make a decision at that point. Her prints were ready, this was a few weeks ago, but if I had put them up on the website and said, here we are, the scent of chrysanthemums is back in production, away we go, the 30 or prints or so that she had produced out of that batch of 60 would have sold straight away. Whatever price we're going to set, we're, we're, we still weren't sure. But they would have sold. And then what do I do? She was beat up by that, you know. And I would have just been in the same hole that I am in with the Great Wave. Here I am with huge demand for a specific print and not able to fulfill it. Just able to dribble them out bit by bit now and then. 
So I didn't want to get in that situation. So I just held off, I held back, and I sent the block set out to Chiharu-san. And I'm a bit of a bad boy because she had been set up to do the next batch of great wave printing. And I said, let's put that aside for a moment. Let's do this new project you've never seen before. Let's do this scent of chrysanthemums. And she was cool by that. It, it's going to pay her very, 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 very well anyway, either way. So it's fine. She's fine for a break from the great wave. So she did. And those that box is due to come back here this morning. She chatted with me a couple of times uh, over the phone while it was going on. And she did also. She also said, man, are we going to be printing this all the time? And I'm like, well, if you do a good job on this one, yeah, we'll be printing this all the time. <laughs> She's like, really? So we're sort of in the same position with this print now as we are with the wave. We have a set of blocks that's very, very difficult to print the way we want to print it. You know, anybody can slam out some version of the great wave with no problem, but the way we're doing it is, is difficult. And now we've built ourselves the same thing with this scent of chrysanthemums. We've got a set of blocks here that clearly is difficult to print, but is high demand. So the point being, the point of what I'm telling you now is this. When I get this thing back today, when I get her box of prints back, she had, I think, 80 sheets, 60 sheets, I can't remember. She had a, a bunch of sheets, 60 sheets maybe, along with instructions from Sugasan and, and uh, you know, passing on her knowledge on how the block set should be handled and stuff like this. And if the prints are really nice and prints that I want to put out into the world, and if there are not too many spoiled ones, you know, to, to bring down the ratio and bring down the... Mm. bring up the cost. If there's too many spoiled ones, we have to pay her anyway because it's too difficult, which puts up the cost. So today or tomorrow, I'll be looking at that, looking at the prints that come back. I'll give her a phone call. And if I get the mood from her that, you know, Dave, this was nice to do once, and, and thanks for the pay, and it's really cool to have been able to do this, but I really don't think I really want to handle this chore again. If that's the message I get from her, then, then we're going to pull the plug. There's just no way I can open another item in our catalog that is a headache for the printers and a headache for us and just frustration for the customers. There's a reason those Couchier prints were not reproduced during the 20th century. There's a real good reason for it. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. As you can hear from the sound outside, it's recyclable garbage day today. It's Thursday morning here in Tokyo. So last night, the uh, cans, bottles, and cardboard bits and pieces went out. And early in the morning, it was happening when I was on the way to the pool this morning, the metal scavengers were out there first, guys on their bicycles with huge, huge bags of cans. And they don't take the bottles, they take the cans. I guess that's where they get their, uh, their money. So by the time the city truck comes along, there's really no cans left. That's why we don't hear that sound on these streams this morning. You'll just hear the bottles. Because the cans have all, have all been disappeared a few hours ago. By the, uh, 
scavengers. Oh, way too thin. Dave, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? The same thing must happen both stages, you know. When I carved this block, I just, it was too thin. I was too controlly, too delicate. And then when I carved the blocks to go on top of these, the same thing happened. And all the white lines just became too thin. Luckily, it's a reversible thing. You know, we can carve them wider. If I had carved them too wide at the beginning, we would then be just simply throw this block away and start again, or cancel a project, one or the other two, you know. Someone's asking, will the Center of Chrysanthemum's video still be posted on YouTube if you decide to pull the plug on production? You tell me, what should I do? What should I do? Increase more demand for it, or just change the video, tell the story, you know, show the production, leave everybody drooling, and then put an ep epilogue on it and just show them. Pull out the bad copies, chat with, with Suga-san, and just look at the harsh reality of it, that, that in the old days, the men were so good and so fast and so powerful, we can imitate them by, by striving and by cutting carefully and by trying to do this thing, but without the the massive guts of all their power. We can't just put that thing into production. Maybe that would even be a good story on its own. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do the video with a postscript, yeah. And someone else is saying limited edition set of prints. You know, my God, I want to avoid that so much. It goes against everything we've already, we've always said here, you know. Could I ethically do that at this point? Cancel the project. Here's 30 prints from Suga-san. Here's 40 prints from Chihara-san. We've decided not to move ahead because we can't replicate this on an ongoing basis. So here you are, the 70 prints priced at X. We won't be making any more. Is that ethical? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The frustrating thing about this, you know, and actually I, I gotta be careful what I say here because it sounds like I'm super praising myself. I'm not, I'm super praising past Dave. The thing is, I made 200 copies of that thing. In a three month period, I cut the blocks, I cut the key block twice, because I spoiled it the first time, and I printed 200 copies of that thing. And they were nice, they were nice copies. Why can't these ladies who are professional printers, why can't they do it now? They're not crazy, I was just, crazy. It was just stuff that shouldn't have been done, but I just decided to do it. 
it's just not practical. But when you're working by yourself and there's no barriers and there's no, you know, there's, there's 24 hours in a day and there's nobody saying, come on, get away from the workbench, it's time to have dinner and stuff. When you live by yourself and you're crazy, but you can't ask other people to do that. So I've got great credibility with those girls, you know. They are struggling with this, and yet there's my, there are my copies left over, and we got a bunch of my copies still here, you know. But uh, they know now also that I really probably can't do this now. I did that in my 50s, I guess, prime, I guess. And if I were trying to do it now, I'd be struggling just as much as they're struggling. Well, as you can see now with the carving. But it is frustrating that I can pull it off then and we can't pull it off now. Yeah. This block is going to be okay, absolutely, with no doubt, I will be able to neaten these up, open them up, take a test print, come back, open up a bit more, take a test print, open them up a bit more. We can get this base blue block, without a shadow of a doubt, we can get this base blue block looking exactly as we want it. I'll send it back to Mr. K. I will have him print it hard and heavy to give good, deep, rich blue pigment so that we can see the width of all these lines. So this one we know we can get established. What happens next is unclear. Whether those overlaying blue blocks are repairable or, you know, if their thinness falls within the new width of these lines, we pair it off and we're okay. But if their thinness doesn't overlap exactly what we've got here, then those blocks go out and we start again much, 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 much more carefully. So we'll get this thing done. How's our time? Oh, it's Ayano time. Any minute. Watch on the camera. No, she comes from the other direction. She comes from uh, Ayano Ginza line, Osaka Station. Osaka Station. So we won't see her coming. She will just charge in the door. I remember now when I was carving this the first time, chatting with you guys and thinking, this is such a nice block to carve, all these curves, it's the perfect carving. Job made in heaven, blah, 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 blah. And all the time I was carving them too thin.
There's rare. One of mine is fatter than the original. This one's fatter as well. Oh, it's a yano san. Five, three, two, one, <laughs> nine o'clock on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> come and say, oh, too much junk in the way. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Here's something we don't see on our stream very often. <laughs> it's that Chinese teacher, you know, I, I, I showed the An Nai Zhou of his, uh, his exhibition, mm -hmm. but the, the bag he have prints that he brought, you know, so put it. That exhibition in Kamakura. So, so, so. so, so. so, 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 so. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? I'm okay. We haven't seen you here for a while, Anna, because I was in Ome on Monday, and then it was Saturday before that. We haven't seen you for a week. Well, longer than that, actually. Uh, which people, I think. You were walking upstairs, like, uh, the past two Oh, that's weeks. right. Yeah. Thursday was a stream upstairs. We haven't seen Ayano for weeks. <laughs> so, so, how are you doing? <laughs> I've seen you, but they haven't seen <laughs> right, you. Right, right. So, so, well, so. Any updates on the big news, you know? News well, we took the paper to the city hall, and they... they looked through and then I got a call from them and you know you gotta fix this and you gotta fix that. She's talking about the marriage marriage I know marriage license or marriage uh, registration of marriage. Okay, hi, okay. Hi. So it didn't go smooth? They've rejected it? No, they didn't reject it. We took the paper to the city hall when that was a national holiday on Monday. Mm, mm, so it mm. was actually close, but they took the, the paper separate, yeah, yeah, and yep, then they, they went through that. the paper the next day. And yeah, like uh, some parts I what well, we forgot to like translate. So okay. all documents are like from Taran's side, all documents mm. are written in English, English, and they want a translation, translation by me. So I don't know how how, you, how much I, they can trust it. But so they don't need an authorized translator certified no. by the United Nations or no. whatever or anything. Okay. Yeah. And also, it's okay to write the translation, you know, by handwriting. So I was like, really? Well, how, how which which uh, which is city off? Is this Shinjuku? -ku? Shinjuku. -ku. So many foreigners yeah, are there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, they're okay. like okay. whatever. Okay. Yeah, okay. Another okay. foreigner. Okay. Foreign. The thing about there, when a, when a Japanese person here is marrying a foreigner, one of the sticky points is the foreigner is supposed to prove that he is free and clear and able to marry. In Japan, it's not a problem because there's a family registration system. And by showing your recent copy of your own family registration, it's clear whether you're married or single. So the lady pre presents her copy of her family registration. The guy in question presents his copy. And the clerks can thus see these two people are not married. They are free and clear. Mm -hmm. And they get married. When one of the persons is a foreigner, this was my case many years ago, and it's now a case with Taransan, the clerks ask the foreigner, please show documentary proof that you're, that you're single. And for most countries, whatever, there's no such actual thing. You know, you might have a paper that says you were married, but there's no paper that the, the government doesn't know whether you're single. There's no registry of all these things in the back office there. So Taransan, I guess there's a place in England called Somerset House where you can go to get your genealogy type of information, mm -hmm. but you can't prove a negative that he's no. not married. <laughs> so. Yeah, when he went to the British Embassy, it was really easy to get the paper. Like they went to the, uh, he went to the office and they said, mm. "Are you married? No. Okay." So it's self, it's self declaration for people like Taransan and me. So I must have done the same thing at the Canadian Embassy. The guy says, "I know they want this paper. Are you married?" I said, "No." He said, "Okay, sign here." Bang. So it's simply self declaration in front of a you know official type person. Right. But didn't he do this in advance? So you had this paper. We had the paper, so we prepared oh, the paper. They wanted it in Japanese. They wanted it in Japanese. Soka, soka, so soka, wait, soka. yeah, we went to the city hall once together, like last Tuesday or something, mm. before bringing the actual paper mm. to the city hall, mm. and then we confirmed what mm. you know the contents, content we yeah. need, and they, you know, they told us like you need this and you need that, but I don't know the different people just you know saw the paper and you know they're like oh now we need this and now we need that. I was like, okay. It's the, what you, what you call the DMV run around. You go to window number one and they say, we need a paper from window four. You go to window four, they say, before we give you that, we need a paper from window number yeah, yeah. one. You know, <laughs> Japan is not so bad at this actually, usually. Well, uh, I don't know, city hall, I don't know. And then, you know, when it comes to, you know, Taking yeah. a foreigner and how, how yeah. much they There's can trust lots foreigners. of foreigners living in Shinjuku ward. Yeah. So, where I was doing this out in the boonies, there was nothing. The mm -hmm. clerks had never seen my paperwork before, they didn't know what was going on. So, right. but she's in an area where not only are there lots of foreigners, there will also be lots of foreigners who might be trying to game the system. 
There will be, you know, Yaksa people bringing in Philippine girls, doing fake marriages. You know, there is lots of scam going on here. So Ayano San is trying to thread the needle here in a place where there is a lot of scamming going on. And when the clerks really see this person and Taran from Wales, it's pretty clear mm. they are not gangsters and there's no scam. But still, the, the verification obviously is stricter for you yeah. than it would be in a different area. Especially yeah. when his paper are written in like two languages, like one in Welsh and one oh, in Oh, it's in Welsh? No. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no it, it has English too, so like both like the Welsh and the English you know, written okay. on the same paper. So I was like, oh. oh okay. All bets are off. All bets are off. Coming to Japan with paperwork in Welsh, I'm sorry. All like, bets are off. <laughs> I didn't even, you know, like understand, like, Karen, I don't know if this is English or Welsh, like, it sounds... <laughs> They're going, similar. is it North Welsh or South Welsh? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know, but yeah, they didn't even look at my Koseki paper, you know, like, they took the paper. My Koseki paper is actually from, like, 10 years ago. I didn't even, like, get the new paper because I had one copy left. Yeah, that's but okay, they whatever. That, you know, I should get, get a renew, yeah. yeah, yeah but, I thought that was, you had to get one within the last three months or six months or something to show, really? Back in my uh, hometown. And they have this rule that you know the koseki paper has to be you know yes uh, they have a date of less than six months old or something yeah, yeah you know, they have so many people coming every day so they're like whatever yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's a bit funny because hearing this story, you may get the idea that Japan is a bureaucratic nightmare or something and really that's really not the case I know there is bureaucracy in Japan and they sure like their paperwork, same as everywhere. But for the most part, it really is sensible stuff. My, my own personal experience, you know, you, everybody's very, mileage differs. And another very important point to talk about Japanese bureaucracy compared with some other Asian countries is none of this involves the transfer of any money. She's not asked for money. There's no underneath payments. You can't pay something to make it happen faster. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing like this happening in Japan. This is simply decent people at City Hall trying to do their job within the parameters that they've been given. And uh, she's put a couple of barriers in place themselves, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, but paperwork is a lot more. Taran was like more like astonished to see like how, how many sheets really? of paper they need. But there's no like actual not like a ceremony included in this okay part. well i think taran san saying is he's pretty young both of you guys are pretty young and back in his own country he probably has not been in too many situations that have required a lot of paperwork mm -hmm. you know weddings funerals buying houses stuff like mm -hmm. this so he's coming at this as a young person who doesn't really have many encumbrances and this is the first experience in his life where he's doing something that does require actually a bunch of paperwork so I, and maybe for you too you know so mm -hmm. so well, i'm not sure you know yeah what, translation <laughs> so, I don't so. understand those terms that are used in the, you know, like those official, uh, you know, formal paper. Mm. So mm. I struggled mm. a little bit. Somebody is saying here that he's surprised that his friend, just to renew his spouse visa, he still has to take the day off for it. And this is because you can't make appointments at the immigration office. And uh, they are overwhelmed. It's a line-up city. There's no appointment system. So even if your requirement is very simple, as mine was many years ago, in this case you're talking spouse visa, no trouble with the police, it's an automatic renewal, but getting your two minutes with the officer requires standing in line with 50,000 other people who are, have heavy requirements and didn't have their paperwork ready and stuff like this. So the, the problem for that is simply that there's no appointment system. No. Maybe they tried it and it was a disaster, I don't know. So immigration here just, it's, it's again, what, what did I say, the DMV, it's the, the classic case in American countries, the Department of Motor Vehicles, where it's sort of, it's bureaucratic snake chaos lines all over the place, so. Yeah, um, I didn't get any call yesterday, so I thought, I think the paper went through. If no call, which means like the paper went So through. this means you are now actually married. Hi, so the way must. So she's married. There you are. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, you told me before I forgot, what is the plans for like a, a ceremony type thing or what are you guys thinking well, about? We're not planning anything yet because uh, there are many things just mm, coming going at on. the same okay. time. So, yeah. so simply, but down the road sometime there will be a, a ceremony slash party slash event or? Mm, well, 
からいいかなって感じですね。そう、なんか、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、はい。かみこちかな or somewhere like this. そうですかねどこだろう、so, uh, あ、あと私、山も登りました。Oh, by the way, I climbed a mountain, <笑> she says, you know, whatever.2900 meters.2900 meters. So. meters. Okay, just put that in perspective. Fujisan is whatever, it's 3300 meters, is it? Something like that. So we're talking about a top level mountain in Japan yeah, 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 yeah. here. Really? Is, yeah. this, is this mountain climbing with hands and ropes and stuff, or is this, you know. All, all Mixed. There was a glacier that we need to put the spikes on Grand to climb the mountain,、yeah. and also a rocky area, very steep, and you know, long ridges, you know, along like three mountains or so. So, yeah, this is actually the, mountain climbing, mountain not just climbing. strolling.、Like, yeah. what, what's, what mountain?、Uh, Mount Shirouma in Nagano. Shirouma, White Horse Mountain、mm-hmm. in Nagano.、Was、First it... time in my life I struggled, I thought I wouldn't make it. Like, it was Hontani. Wind was too strong and it pushed us back, or you know, pushed us from the side. And I、mm. thought I would, you know, fall from the, from the ridge、really? or the top. Of the was、mountain. this a day up and down? You didn't stay up there?、Uh, stay up there.、Oh, there was a lodge.、Mm. Okay. Okay. It's a big one. Yeah. 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 So, so we can look it up. Shira, Shira Uma Yama. Shiro, Shiro Uma. Uh, Shiro Uma Dake. Shira Uma Dake. We can pop it in here if you guys want to look it up. Shiro Uma Dake. <laughs> mm. Cool mountain,、well. so, yeah. Working your way up to Everest. <laughs> But was it crowded though? Yes, it yes, was pretty yes, crowded. Because it was a three day weekend. Ah,、yeah. that, that weekend, yeah. yeah While I, I was in Omedu in my stream, you were mountain climbing. So, right. Okay, so, okay, so, But the mountain itself is really famous for the view. So, yeah,、mm. lots of people were trying and also lots of people got in trouble. They, got in trouble, Nani. Yeah, because of the, the weather, toka, they fell. Toka. You mean like helicopter rescues and stuff? What are you talking about?、Oh, you got it, must be a helicopter rescue. While you were in the middle of this? Well, I didn't see anybody, but I saw, literally, I saw somebody who was about to fall from the ridge, and Taran actually grabbed her. She was like, Hontoni, so close. Just a careless dish, Nani. She was like, with the,、mm-hmm. with the fun picture and stuff. <laughs> And a strong wind pushed her, and she was like, Ooh, I don't think、grabbed. I want to hear this stuff. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, cool experience. Sorry, nothing related to Mokahanga. This <laughs> is、okay. okay. <laughs> okay. All right. right. Yeah, well, thanks、yeah. for the updates. All right. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. What's on our schedule today, you and me? It's、uh, Thursday. Just catch up stuff to show you. want to do a jet box? So, you want to do the UQA heroes in the jet box? That'll be my priority after the stream, right? So, this is Okay, okay.、Hi. Other than that, I'm on the hook or I'm off the hook? Off the hook. Okay,、Stop. okay, okay. We'll see. <laughs> Hi. Thanks, Hansan.、Yeah, yeah, okay, bye bye. My days of those kind of exploits are, are done. You know, I was, I was <coughs> very much an inveterate hiker. <coughs> Excuse me. I've never been a climber in terms of roping up and that kind of stuff. No way. I've never done that. But,、uh, and the place they climbed there sounds like it might have been a place that I wouldn't have tried. If it's that level of danger, Dave would never have been involved in something like that.、So. To be 29 again. Okay, where are we? It's 9 14. Look at that. We ate up our whole time between this and show and tell. This is funny too. Look at this area here. Something went wrong where all of these, I was, I've been coming around thickening up these thin lines. You can see a bunch of them have really been quite thin. Compared to what we have on the master copy. But once we get to this corner, some of mine here were really thick. Look at this. Mine is way thicker 
than the line on the original. So I'm not going to touch it now. And it looks like all the rest around the corner here, around behind her thigh, all the rest of my are very, very fat. They're fatter than normal. Is this where I started? Anybody remember a half year ago when I was doing this? Maybe I started in a place where no one's going to really be looking carefully at the background. I might have started here and worked my way up around, gradually getting more confident and thinning out and being more careful as I went. It's quite possible. Anyway, no, no, no carving necessary here. These lines are all too fat. Okay, so what I'll do, and we're going to have a show and tell now, then after the stream I'll do the same thing. I'll work up here on these longer lines. Clearly some of these are also need to be opened out. And then I will send this block to Mr. K. Or maybe Sugasan can upstairs print this for me. We will have this block then printed thick and hard to make sure these lines are as, as stressed as possible. If they're going to be too thin, we want to make sure we can check it now. So we're going to print heavy and hard. I will then come back, open up a few more as necessary. We'll print it again heavy and hard. We'll do that two or three times until I've got this block open to the point where it's good to go and to the point where it matches the original. And then we'll start looking at the overlaid color blocks and try and decide what to go, what to do. So we are going to get a print here, but it's not happening this week. I'm sorry. So someone's got it. When they print it with more pressure, the lines won't seem as wide. They won't be. They won't be. Someone's asking, what about the test print? Those areas there behind her bum, under her thigh. Let's check that. Here they are. You can see there's one didn't make it. So that's clearly then that one like this. It's not a problem with the base blue block. That's a problem with an overlaid block. So we have to be careful here. A lot of these problems are not really problems on the base. They're problems on the overlaid blue. So we've just got to get the base looking like we want it first and then we'll take it from there. If you're a pessimist, you're going to imagine that my blue overlaid blocks will all be tossed out and we'll start from scratch. If we're an optimist, I may be able to scavenge them or fix them. Place your bets. I don't know. Okay, let's just relax now then. Put this block aside. I see also friend Jacques was on the stream the other day. We looked at this book. We mentioned Jacques, my friend Jacques in Holland, the Netherlands, has this book along with many more. His collection is much more expansive than mine for this type of print. And what we did last week, we looked at six of the images here, but I didn't show you how these books work. And this is really, really fun. Those of you who haven't seen this sort of thing before, watch. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you the structure of these things. This is an accordion book. It's all one piece. There's no spine and opening. A normal book, we've got a spine, it opens out, you turn the pages. This is not such a thing. This is an accordion. It's Japanese. So you start with the title page and you read right to left. We're just going to quick flip through here to show you how the structure works. We'll stop and look at the prints in a minute. Here's how it works. You're opening your album to look through. You open from the right. Title page, print number one. Some of the glue here is broken, so I'm being careful how I do this. Print number two. They're even numbered to help us get through this. Print number three. Print number four. Numbered again with our <clears throat> not egg. Print number five. We saw this the other day. Print number six. And then when you try and turn the page to get to the next print, you find what you're doing is you're actually turning the back cover of the album. No problem there. Slide it across and you know where this is going. We are going to get to print number seven. And you turn eight, nine. They're all coming apart. 
10, 11, 12, and you close it back off with the back side, and there you are, back at the beginning. This is the classic Japanese album format. And this one is 12, it's 6 and 6. We've got a, some of these albums upstairs that have a full set of Tokaido prints. You work your way down, there's 55 prints in the set, you work your way down to print number 26 or 27, you're at the back side, you flip it over, and away you go for the back. Now, part of it, you saw just a moment ago, as I was turning the pages, it didn't quite work as cleanly as possible. Because what these guys have done is, rather than paste the prints back to back, <clears throat> so when you're looking at one, you would actually be seeing the back side of the other print. They have put tons of interleaving between here. Let's try and see how it will here. If I'd actually turn, these would have been originally glued together. There is the print that's on the back side. You see, oh, it's chaos. Can you, I don't, I've got to be careful because I don't want to spoil this thing. Again, imagine this would normally have been glued together as would this. So when you turn the page here, you're pulling the whole backside print and you're moving to the next one. So none of the prints are glued onto prints themselves. They're glued to interleaving papers with another layer of interleaving paper inside. I'm not in any way going to fiddle with this or fool with this, but that's why when I've been turning these pages, sometimes I have come up blank. That would have been tacked together and the original purchaser of the book would just turn pages like this. We looked at the first six. Let's get to the back side of the album and now let's spend a couple of minutes looking at seven to twelve. Someone's asking, are the ladies, some ladies in waiting at the court? No, there is nothing, uh, there's two, two things we are not seeing here. This is nothing to do with the Yoshiwara. Many, 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 many prints from Japan, from the, the Ukiwe era. When you see Bijin, beautiful ladies, you're dealing with professional ladies. This album is nothing of the kind nor is it related to anything specifically to do with the imperial family or anything. These are simply, well, these are rich people. These are, these are upper class people. The environment we're seeing here, the homes, the kimono, the dress, the, the habits, everything, this is lifestyles of the rich but not famous. And again, to show the outs, to, to, to zoom in or zoom out, She's getting an Obon lantern ready. This is marked as print number seven, but that doesn't specifically mean July. Obon would have been late summer, and the older calendar and the newer calendar don't really match up, and some of these things don't just match January, February, March, April, May. She's, getting a, she's wearing a white kimono, and she's preparing an Obon lantern. And I don't know too much about that other than the fact that these lanterns, it's supposed to be part of the year when the spirits of the departed will be uh, making visits back home, seeing how things are going, whatever, whatever. Can we see it? Her kimono, which looks like a blank white kimono, is not. It's heavily textured. Let's see if we can catch this. We're looking for texture can you see it? It's very, very light. Her entire kimono is delicately textured with what we call the Nuno Mezuri. The pattern of fabric, printed with pattern of fabric. This book is, the age of this book is, let's get it over here, we've got the date on every one of these prints. This one says Meiji 32. Meiji 32, February the 1st was the publication date for this print. Are they all going to match? Because these prints may have been uh, published individually. Meiji 32, that one says. This one says Meiji 32. It looks like we've got a, a consistent date on here. Meiji 32.
and it's such a pleasure, you know. What's what's the age? If what was the age in was eighteen ninety nine? So this thing is a hundred and twenty four years old. One hundred and twenty four years old. I was complaining because some of the glue was breaking down. The degrees were running by the old calendar. This is marked as the eighth print, the eighth month, but we're really looking at an October kind of a scene here, autumn kind of scene. So they don't really match contemporary months. There's a real blend of old fashioned calendar usage. And again, same thing. The copy I've got here is not the absolute, total, best world-class copy. You can see it's a bit of breaking down the lines. Good morning, Mr. Sam. Maybe the copy my friend Jacques has in Holland, he might have a better copy. He's a bit more of a print connoisseur than I am. and He has the time and trouble to look up these things. Dave will just grab whatever comes along. Someone's asking how old are the earliest surviving woodblock prints. They go back quite a long way. China has much, much older. China and Korea were doing this long before the Japanese were doing it. I'm not an expert on this. There are The earliest ones are Buddhist stampings. They carved a bit of Buddhist imagery and they stamped them on billions of pieces of paper, chopped them up, and these were little sort of religious icons. And they find them in the back of wooden statues all stacked up and they were given out to people as prayer, prayer things. So the earliest printmaking in Japan is Buddhist iconography, way, 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 way back. Someone says, is the fabric texture cut into the block? No, they cut the block the shape we want and then glue fabric on top of it. And the paper is pressed onto the fabric and it picks up the, the pattern. Nuno mezuri, the pattern of fabric printing. Lots of aluminum on these things, you know. I, I'm really not uh, in love with this. Aluminum for bling is not my, uh, not my thing. And you, what, what she's doing here, of course, we have a reflection of the moon in the water. The lady is enjoying schemy moon viewing in a reflection. Looks like a gradation. It's not a gradation. It's a carved pattern in the blue. Oh, on top of a gradation. Okay, they're both true. Have we used fabric printing? Yes, in my beauties of, uh, beauty series there's fabric printing and in my mystique of the Japanese print there's fabric printing. Here we are, the vermilion. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vermilion. I can't get this pigment. It's a wonderful design, wonderful design. My God, these colors. You'll see it again. Her, her, her kerchief is embossed. There it is, you can see it. The pattern on her kerchief. Gradation at the top of it. The women all look like the same person. This is Mizuno Toshikata, that's his, that's Toshikata's. It's classic face, they all look like the same person. I guess it's a fisherman pulling something up, I guess. Yes, somebody say you have to replace the fabric pieces. Yes, they get smucked out and the fabric has to be replaced because they just get too softened. It is hardened. They use an all yani, an all, what's the word, a rosin. It's, it's glued in place, not with glue, but it's glued in place with a rosin, like a pine rosin, and it hardens. And the fabric gets hardened by this rosin. So it, it has a, a hard effect. It's not a soft piece of cloth or it wouldn't make an impression. This is the 11th one, and I would guess that we're referring here to perhaps the Shichiko-san festival, the 753 festival, where kids are dressed up in kimono, taken to the shrine. 
I would guess that's what we're being referred to. Again, aluminum bling. black it's just velvet it's like looking into outer space it's as black as black as black can be pull push I can just whatever just give up and that's 11 good morning Marcella Sam hello 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 and then the last one and this black kimono is a little different the last black kimono was just black but this black kimono, can you see it if I find the light right? Can you see it? Her black kimono has what's called shoumen zudi, front rubbing printing. Look at this face. There's a sub pattern in there, which when you look from a certain angle doesn't appear. And a certain angle is there. And look at this, the car look at this, the carver. Oh my god, can we read this? I don't think so. Just a second. No, 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 no. It's just oh wait. It's a mix. It's a mix. It's not just random squiggles. There are characters in there. And he may have actually started with an actual text that had meaning. But I don't think we can read this. There's nobody can read this. No, 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 no. Too much of it is just squiggle. Rawr, 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 with a readable character stuck here and stuck there. There's no way. They're not that insane. Look at the size. <laughs> They're crazy, but they weren't that crazy. Anywhere. Depths of midwinter. This is her garden. And I got to tell you, you have no idea how cold this lady's house is. She may have been rich and they may have been, you know, very well off, but there wasn't any heating. That's the heating for the house, a little charcoal hibachi. It's not the heating for the house. That's the only heating. She's got the metal chopsticks. She has stirred up the coals. She has a little pipe, interesting. And she's bundled up. So they may have been very rich, but they were still very, very cold in winter. Just such wonderful prints, my God. Do I know the name of the carver? No, none of the craftsmen's names for these prints are preserved at all. Completely, totally, absolutely anonymous. For these album prints. We know the publisher, but we don't know. We know the designer, but we don't know the carver and printer. Just nameless craftsmen. And they didn't care. They, they, he, the carver wouldn't have expected, you know, my name will be chanted on Dave's Twitch stream in 2023 and you will all bow down at my mastery. Nothing. They just carved. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I think we showed this book before. Sorry for the repetition, but just every now and then, you know, it's just too good. I myself take these things out, look at them again, so that we can do the same thing here. We won't repeat show and tell all the time, but it's okay to take some of these things out and look at them, just to enjoy. Okay, I'm done. That's Thursday. I'll be back here Saturday morning. As far as I can see now, my work for the next little while, it's mostly desk work and stuff right now. I've got to get going on that chrysanthemum print and stuff like this. But the Dave's desk work for the next little while is going to be trying to get this Surfer Girl block up and running. So that's what you'll probably be seeing Saturday when we drop in. And then sometime during next week, I don't know what day, Monday or Thursday, there will be more sizing streams because all the printers are eager to get going on their chance at learning the sizing. So we will see more sizing streams. Okay, I'm out of here, headed for a cup of coffee. 
thanks for hanging around. Thanks to the mods for chatting and helping keep things in order. Who's this? Oh, it's the vegetable man. Is he going to pull him? He's late today. Yasai no maru yasu. He'll be delivering to the shop on our right hand side. He's going to take some trays of vegetables out and he'll walk off camera to the right. It's the meat restaurant next door to us. That's where it's there. Where he goes. Yes, I know, Mara Yasu. <laughs> Funny little guy, you know. I've never spoken to him. He delivers to many, many restaurants around here. Sometimes he parks here. Sometimes, oh, he's going to leave his truck here now. Okay. So he's going to make his long deliveries. This is going to go off to the left, I believe. He delivers to some restaurants up at the left side, up near Donkey. These are vegetables, not yeah. all that heavy. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, he does. He does seem to have a back problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hot dog place setting up further down the sidewalk to the left. The stools are now out, and the signs are going out for the Korean hot dog stand. Many <laughs> life in the sucks. I've never seen David Attenborough's program, so I don't know the mood and the voice. I can't do this. A saksa comes to life, the sun gradually rising above the buildings, the vegetable man making, I don't know, I don't know the proper voice and stuff. I should look it up and, and do this. <laughs> April 1st, one day. Anyway, okay, I got to get out of here. You can see what that guy's doing. This is Lei-chan. This is one of ours. This is Lei-chan, the printer, coming to work. She's going to come in the door and come upstairs. That's not one of ours. Okay, guys, thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.